Hi, Anila Yaho here. In this tutorial, I'd like to demonstrate some good practices in 3D modeling for getting the best deformations in your animations. Here I have a character created a long time ago. And seeing it from today's perspective, this character have some good modeling features and some not so good. Okay, so I've done this a long, long time ago. Um, however, it's a good example to bring here and to see what works and what doesn't. Holding down Command 1, I can isolate the face. This is kind of a medium resolution. If we go and check out the, the poly count, Okay, we can see here we have uh, that many vertices, okay, 1800 vertices. So it is good, but still is going to need a smooth uh, operation in the end. One of the most important topics of 3D modeling is respecting the topology. The models must respond correctly to deformations during animations. For example, when the arm or knee bend, the edge loops must support the bend. The edge loops must flow around the bend to create smoothness on the mesh. Taking topology into consideration is necessary, especially if we're going to animate the model. If I illustrate this on a fish drawing, topology is going to require for the edges to be parallel to the y-axis so the bend of the fish body will be supported and create a smooth deformation. While if I was going to draw another fish where the edges are at an angle instead of following the topology of the fish, as you can see those faces do not have an edge at the bend line and the edges are at an angle to the bend making the faces impossible to hold their shape during the bend. For example, these lines on the face, they are drawn in a way that, if we can imagine the character smiling, these quads are placed in a way that are going to support the deformation of the smile. We can clearly see the lines going around the eyes area, supporting the circle shape of the eye. Also around the nose, these edges all flow, just like as topology requires. Now going to the rest of the body, and I'm going specifically to the arms. Command 1 to isolate the arms. Here is where, uh, obviously, the topology is not taken into consideration. I say this because if I had to bend this arm, this way how the topology goes around here, it's not going to support the bend. Neither topology nor the resolution are at its best. Also, the resolution, which is the amount of faces, edges and vertices, it's not enough to give us a smooth deformation during the bend. Let me get out of the isolation mode. Command 1. Now here I have much better modeling of an arm and leg to demonstrate better topology. This elbow is not complete either, however, even at this phase is much better than this other arm. The same goes for the knees. Not only the amount of the resolution, which is very important and very different compared to this one, the modeling has taken into consideration the deformations. Each line here goes along the mesh in a way that when this knee bend, those lines are going to be parallel to this bending and will produce some smooth result. We are now talking about for more advanced type of modeling here to get to this level where we uh, take into consideration uh, the uh, deformations if we're going to animate this character. So let me show you how I go about creating the knee topology on these pants. Supposedly we have done the first draft of our model and now it's time to work on topology. I would go ahead and first shape it up and make it ready for adding some more edge loops 
to increase the resolution so we can get some uh, good deformation when the knee bends. We can use the multicut tool to add some geometry around the area. Next we need to connect those corners so we can have quads. We don't want to have faces with more or less than four edges in general, especially if that part of the mesh will be visible to the camera, because these faces do not support smooth deformations and under certain lighting conditions we would see some hard edges over smooth areas producing some undesirable results. And finally we can continue pushing and pulling vertices to make it look better. Now more resolution we add, it's better for the deformations we get. However, we don't want to have too much resolution either. I can keep on going and get into the desired shape. We can go ahead and use the lattice tool here to make a global rotation of the whole point because I noticed the knee direction was a bit more inward. So if I see the wireframe then I can see that I need a bit rotation of this lattice around this area so it can point in a better direction for the knee bend. We can delete history for getting out of the lattice tool. I would keep on reshaping here but I get the point across. Just like the knee, the body has other deforming areas that need to preserve the roundness during the animation. Even though this character is a little boy and, and probably doesn't need that much of work in, let's say, creating muscles. Uh, you still want to create the right topology for the round bumpy shapes, especially when the formations are going to be visible. Another quick way to create some more resolution for a rounded shape, let's say a muscle shape, is by using extrusion. Here I have selected the faces where the muscle needs to be defined, and then using extrude operation quickly I can get the same topology that I created earlier in a different way. Finally I can go ahead and reshape as usual. I'll end it here to continue in another tutorial with some more tips and techniques for best practices in 3D modeling with Maya.